This is an old Windows XP laptop from 2007. It has an Intel Core 2 Duo processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and a 320 gigabyte hard drive. And I'm going to be trying to optimize it to run Minecraft with good FPS. This might be my toughest challenge yet. So here's the deal. I did manage to get Minecraft running on Windows XP, but it was bad. And I mean really bad. The game took really long to load up. The frames were absolutely terrible and it couldn't even run the latest version of the game. I wasn't satisfied with this laptop's performance. I mean, sure, it's a 17 year old laptop, but there must be something that I can do to make it run smoother, right? So right now we're running on Windows XP, which was fun to revisit in my last video. But to optimize this laptop, I think we're going to need to update our OS. So let's say goodbye to Windows XP and hello to Windows Vid. No, we're skipping that disaster and going straight to Windows 7. Windows 7 is way more stable than Windows XP and Vista. And this should give us a really good shot at making Minecraft playable. But here is where I hit my first real roadblock. To be honest, I think Windows 7 is probably the operating system best meant for this laptop. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install Minecraft on here, see how it runs, and then see how we can optimize it. All right, so I've just opened up the Minecraft standard launcher here. We're just going to go for Minecraft 1.8.9 just to get started. All right, so it's loading up right now. So we're doing 1.8.9 because I think it'll... Oh. As soon as I launched Minecraft on Windows 7, everything fell apart. So I installed Java to see if that would fix it. All right, so with Java installed, let's try it again. Hopefully this will open up this time and then we can get optimizing. It just crashed again. So instead I tried using MultiMC, but that didn't work either. Turns out the OpenAL sound engine wasn't playing nice with this laptop's ancient hardware. At this point, things were not looking good, but instead of giving up, I decided to try something a little bit more drastic and install the Forbidden Launcher and see if that works. Oh my god, it actually worked. Out of all the launchers and all the problems I've had, we've just launched into a game and it is incredibly laggy. Let me just throw up a... <laughs> Yep, that's what you want to see. A nice 8 to 10 FPS. Yeah, this is going to be a challenge, isn't it? We are on quite high video settings, so let's turn them down and see what FPS we get there. All right, so I've just turned down some video settings and we're playing at, well, about 30 FPS, which isn't great, but it is an improvement from what we've got. We're on like pretty much the lowest video settings possible and we can even turn down the resolution of our full screen as well. So now when I go into full screen, oh my God. <laughs> This quality is terrible. Oh my god, look at the FPS! 300 FPS! What? I mean, this quality is terrible. Uh, look at the blocks! The blocks are so bad. But this is actually incredibly playable now. I mean, yeah, the game looks terrible. But the FPS... Did you just see that? We've got like 300 FPS. From 30 to 300 FPS. Oh. Oh no, we've crashed. Oh no, we've really messed up our resolution now. So after crashing Windows 7, I decided to fix all my problems by updating the laptop again, but this time to Windows 10. Windows 10 ran on here no problem at all. With Windows 10's automatic updates, I figured I'd be able to install all the drivers and get Minecraft running but I had no luck whatsoever due to this error. You see, the drivers for this laptop are so old, they won't work on any version later than Windows 7. So we can't get graphics drivers for Windows 10 or anything later than that. I tried researching some more, but no one was facing the same problems I had. And I didn't want to go back to Windows XP as there was nothing to optimize there. So I got increasingly annoyed and honestly considered scrapping this video altogether. But I couldn't scrap this video because I had promised NordPass I would tell you about their password manager. Passwords. We all have way too many, right? Whether it's logging into a new work account, sharing access within a team, or simply resetting yet another password because you've forgotten it, managing them all can feel impossible. And if you're anything like me, you've probably struggled remembering or sharing your passwords, especially when managing a business. This is where NordPass comes in. NordPass is an intuitive password manager for businesses and individuals, 
and it's an all-in-one solution for securing, organizing, and sharing your passwords. It's designed for simplicity and security with end-to-end -end encryption. You can safely store, manage, and share all your passwords credit card info, or any other sensitive company data. In my own experience, NordPass has saved so much time. Forget using password spreadsheets, which are not only insecure, but also wastes valuable time, or using the same password for everything, which let's face it, we're all guilty of. You can use NordPass to securely share passwords and sensitive data with colleagues, ensuring controlled access and the ability to revoke access when necessary. It's all organized, secure, and for businesses, it's an absolute game changer. If you're serious about keeping your business secure, you need to try NordPass. Try it today at nordpass.com slash notrodan and use the code notrodan for a free three month trial of NordPass business. Thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. But then I tried one last option and that was to install Linux on this laptop. So I installed Ubuntu on here and nothing. The installation just froze, it didn't copy any files to my disk, so I tried another distro called Linux Mint and it finally installed. Linux Mint is a great version of Linux because it's very Windows-like, very good for beginners, so we're going to be giving it a go on this laptop and seeing what it's like. So I've gone ahead and I've downloaded Prism Launcher. There's a lot of people in my comments say that it's a very good launcher. They're loading up Minecraft. We're going to go with Forge just so that we can have Optifine. Here we are on a single player world. Now, okay, it's frozen already. What's going on? <laughs> These are the video settings we're running. Fast, off, tiny render distance. I think every time that we load in new chunks, it just for some reason just dips in FPS and it's really bad. I would say the performance on Windows is probably better than Linux Mint right now, it's not great. Let's try the lowest full screen we possibly can. I mean, it's not quite as good as on Windows 7, to be honest. Windows 7, we got like 300 by doing this, but for some reason on here, it's not quite as good for some reason. I also made a super flat world here, so I've just dug down. So now we're pretty much in the void and it's max FPS time, what can we get? If we look down here, 740 FPS. Wow, that is like the highest FPS I think I've seen on this laptop. Now, yeah, this isn't real world performance. We're just in a super flat world. We're in the void actually. So we're not getting like this consistently, but in a super flat world, it isn't actually too bad actually. I reckon on like a practice server, if I was doing 1v1s and the map was just flat like this, It'd probably be playable, actually. Now, something else we can try, because since we were using Forge there with Optifine, not the best for performance, really. But something that I've just found out is that we can actually get Fabric for 1.8, and we can actually use a mod called Odium, which is pretty much just like Sodium, but it's been ported to use with older versions, such as 1.8. So we're going to try that here and see if this makes much of a difference, because I've heard Sodium is very good for low-end PCs, it's very lightweight as well. So it looks just like regular 1.8, but if we go into the video settings here, as you can see, we have got the Sodium graphics menu. So yeah, we can go through all of these settings and make sure they're adjusted for the best performance. And then I reckon that we might be onto something really good here. Oh so, yeah, 1.8 with ported Sodium. Not the best actually. As you can see here, Odium renderer. That's pretty good. But yeah, in terms of our FPS here, we're getting about 20, which isn't great to be honest. Now, one thing that I would improve about this is in the full screen here, if we can change the resolution of the full screen, I reckon this would be pretty good to be honest. The only reason that I think Optifine has the advantage over this in terms of FPS is because we set our full screen resolution to like the lowest it could possibly be. Whereas with this, it's running at the max, there's no way to turn it down. I mean, I've turned down my display in Linux itself. But yeah, if you guys wanna try this, then I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's quite a good thing to try out and uh, see if it works for you. But yeah, let's uh, try something else. Now that we have Linux Mint on here, I would say we're on a really good path to optimizing this laptop. However, something that isn't quite as optimized is Linux Mint itself. You see, it's a very beginner-friendly distro, 
Some may call it very bloated with all of the pre-installed software. And also I'm using the Cinnamon desktop environment, which isn't the best for performance. So it might be time to switch this out for Arch Linux and see what performance we can get on there. All right, so I've installed an Arch-based distro on this laptop. We have gone with Manjaro. I was gonna go with Cache OS, but it didn't actually install on here for some reason. It just froze, wouldn't work. So we're using the next best thing, which is Manjaro. So we've got it opened up. We have got Prism Launcher installed and all logged in. And let's see how it runs Minecraft 1.8.9 and see if we can get even more performance using Manjaro. We're using XFC uh, desktop environment, so it should be super light, really well optimized for this laptop. So let's see if that affects the gaming performance. And as you can see, our FPS <laughs> hasn't really changed much. We're on 15 FPS right now, so bit of an improvement, but honestly, compared to Windows, not really much in it, to be honest. Now, if we look at the video settings here, as you can see, everything is pretty much turned off. We've got everything on the lowest it can possibly be. All the animations, we've got all of this stuff, performance, on pretty much everything you can possibly think of. If you want to play Minecraft on this laptop, I think your best option is probably full screen with really low quality, or playing maybe in small windowed mode as well. Might just about do it. Let's see like, what's the max FPS we can get on here. Surely in the void we should be getting like over a thousand. 600 FPS? 700? 800? Can we get a thousand? Yeah! <laughs> 1000 FPS! Wow, that is pretty good. A thousand FPS on a 17 year old Dell Windows XP laptop. There you go. If you can run Minecraft on this, I'm pretty sure you can run Minecraft on anything. Right, it's time for the ultimate test, Hypixel. Can we play on a Minecraft multiplayer server on this laptop? Let's actually try and fight someone on this laptop and see if we can win. Can we win a 1v1 on this laptop? Come on. Yes, we actually won a duel on this laptop. Well, there you go. <laughs> this laptop has been optimized. In a duel, our FPS is like over 100. Now, yeah, we have to play in really bad quality, but it's doable. So can we play Minecraft on this laptop? I reckon we can, to be honest. Probably not any other games. I don't think I want to try any other games on here. You can game on a 17-year-old laptop and win 1v1s. Just like that. Boom. 